Welcome to this video. This video explains mechanisms of damage initiation and evolution in metals, and demonstrates basics of damage mechanics. Probably you have seen the softening part of the stress strain curve. How does degradation happen? How to consider it in our analysis? Consider a specimen or a workpiece during deformation. Most of the time we assume that the part has perfect material, but in fact, it contains microvoids and micro cracks. Here is a real picture of voids in a metal. The part maybe contains some inclusions. This picture shows an inclusion in a metallic part, and we can see initiation of a crack beside it. Now consider a plane parallel to the forming direction. The material could contain microvoids and inclusions in this plane. If we apply deformation to the material, existed microvoids start to grow, and new voids are formed in the material. For example, a void can form beside an inclusion. This stage of damage in a material is known as damage initiation. Damage initiation in a material can be predicted by damage initiation rules. Various rules exist for various materials. These rules predict the onset of damage based on different parameters like stress, strain, and strain rate. By applying more deformation to the material, rather than formation of new voids, existed voids grow, this stage known as damage growth or damage evolution. After more deformation necking happens in walls between two voids. In fact, by necking and then fracture of walls between two voids they join each other and form a larger void. This phenomenon is known as voids coalescence. In this stage material stiffness and strength decrease significantly, and applying more deformation causes sudden failure of the material. Now we understood the mechanisms and stages of damage initiation and growth in a metal. But how can we evaluate and predict damage in a metal? Imagine a part during deformation. Assume we cut the part and investigate its cross-section. If the material was perfect, we had a part with cross-sectional area of A0. We can calculate the applied stress by the force in this area. This stress is known as effective or macro stress. But in reality a part of the cross-section is occupied by voids. So the real area of the part is smaller than A0. We can calculate the real area by subtracting the void area from the A0. The most common parameter which is used to evaluate the damage in a part is D, which is the ratio of the void area to the total areal of the part. This parameter is zero for a perfect material. As the voids form and grow, this parameter increase. When damage parameter reaches to one, it means voids spread to all the area, in fact it means materials fracture. The real stress which is applied to a damaged part can be calculated based on applied force and real area of the part. This stress can be related to the macro stress using damage parameter. Usually damage models assume that the real strain of the material is equal to the macro strain. So we can use the Hooke's law to relate the real stress to the real strain as follows. We can rewrite this formula to show the relationship of the effective stress and effective strain. This relation shows that the effective Young modulus of a damage part decreases as damage grows. In damage mechanics, similar relationships is used to reduce the strength or flow stress of the material. Reduction of the Young modulus of the material can be used to evaluate the damage progress in a material. This diagram shows the stress strain curve of a metal. The perfect material shows constant slope in elastic loading or unloading. But as the damage grows, the slope of the unloading or elastic loading which shows the Young modulus decreases. This amount can be used to measure d-parameter base on this formula. To implement damage in an FE analysis, for example metal forming simulation, we need to perform the following tasks. First, we need to define the effective material response. In other words, elastic plastic response of an undamaged material is defined. Second, a damage initiation criterion is defined to predict the onset of damage. 
Then, a damage evolution law is used to evaluate damage progress and material degradation. Once the material stiffness is fully degraded we can remove the elements by defining element deletion. Please watch our videos which shows how to model damage of metals in Abaca software. Thanks for watching this video. If this video was helpful, please let us know by a like, a comment, or a subscribe.